Okay. So, we are on wine tasting session 42. So this is our, our second bout of Washington wines. And, well, um, we'll actually have a, a couple of, of reruns, but for the most part, um, let, let's, let's start talking about Washington wines. So, if you look here, here is Washington State. And effectively, um, everywhere that, that is kind of encompassed here, so this entire thing here is all is all Columbia Valley, effectively. Um, there's two sub-regions in here, which are Yakima and Walla Walla. Now, um, for for those of you that that haven't really you know been hearing a lot about um, you know these like like just wine terminology or enology terminology. Um, one of the first things that we need to talk about is what's called a, a rain shadow. Now, because you know we, we've got the Pacific here, that you know there's a lot of moisture, cool air that's you know coming this way. Now the thing is though is that there's this huge set of mountains right here, Cascades. And what that's doing is it's blocking all of that wind from from you know crossing over and what you get from that is over on this you know kind of central and eastern side is like almost like a high desert climate with pretty hot summers cold very cold winters and little rain uh, and, and the reason for the name columbia valley comes from well, this, you know, i don't know if you see it if you squint a little up really hard, uh, there is the Columbia River. But, well, I mean, it starts way up here, comes all the way down. So, uh, yeah, starts in the way north, glaciers, everything, you know, other mountains up here. And all that stuff just kind of runs down through um, this Columbia River. And that's effectively where you know, uh, they get most of their water for these grapes. Now, the first place that we want to really kind of uh, concentrate on is, is Yakima Valley. So Yakima Valley is this little, little chunk right here. And I, it was actually the first AVA before Columbia Valley. Hmm. Um, it, it actually started or it was created a year before in 1983. Um, and, and they're still like, the, the almost largest producer of um, of wine based on their size, because I mean you saw um, in, in in comparison the rest of Columbia Valley is giant compared to uh, Yakima, but forty percent of all Washington wine comes from that little area. Now, the thing is though, is that so as we have Yakima Valley here. Uh, it's pretty much a bowl. What you have is you have the, uh, right here, you have the Rattlesnake Hills. And then to the south here is where you have the uh, Horse Heaven Hills. And so, well, um, one of the wines that we have is the H3. That's actually what the, the three H's are, Horse Heaven Hills. And to the, how is it, the, the east side is the Red Mountain. So um, if you ever see uh, wines out there that, that say they're from the Red Mountain, well, it, it's to the east of Yakima. Um, but because of that, that kind of bowl holding, um, you know, or keeping a lot of the, the wind and everything away, uh, at, but also at the same time, also keeping a lot of sunshine away because uh, there's you know from any angle isn't really getting down into that bowl 
And so the degree, the like temperature degrees in Yakima are about five to 10 degrees colder than the rest of, you know, kind of uh, Eastern Washington. And that temperature difference is why there's a lot of whites more than reds that come out of this area. Uh, most notable being Chateau Saint Michel, which um, is one of the other wines that we have, the Eroica. Now, uh, yes, the, technically their their winery is is in Woodenville, outside of Seattle. But uh, all those reasons and shards that they're known for grow there in Yakima. Um, you know, not many groups would, or not many grapes would really uh, grow on that that eastern side of things over here. <laughs> Now, now, that doesn't mean that there's, you know, uh, reds that don't grow in Yakima. Uh, in fact, there, there's quite a few Syrahs that, that do grow there and, and calves, but because of those, those colder, that colder weather, uh, the uh, growth period for those, those red grapes isn't as long. And so, you know, they come out not quite underripe, but uh, they, they are a bit more uh, acidic, and grippy than, you know, kind of a, a kind of a, a smoother, fatter wine that would come from somewhere hotter. Now, the other thing we need to look at is, well, my kind of favorite place, which is Walla Walla. And that's that's right dab down in the southeast corner of Washington, um, with a little bit it's also kind of weird that a little bit of it seeps into Oregon, uh, much like Yakima. Um, though this time, the uh, they actually have winds that, that kind of really blow through there, and it comes off of both uh, this this Columbia River, but also the Snake River. And the temperatures temperatures can really uh, drop during the winter, uh, but it's also one of the hottest regions in the state, which is why Sarang and Cabernet really do well here. Now, uh, along with the Greater Columbia Valley, Walla Walla got its AVA designation in 1984. So again, one year after Yakima, both the Columbia Valley in whole and that Walla Walla subregion uh, both kind of cropped up. Now, the, the plantings that, that are, you know, throughout Walla Walla are, are or at least they, they used to be very Bordeaux, you know, where over like 40% was all Cabernet. And, um, but that's essentially now um, due to, to like, you know, the amount of heat and whatnot uh, coming through is that their, their Cabernet has actually dropped to about 20% with Syrah, you know, uh, now being like 30%. Now that the soil in, in Walla Walla, with it, with it just being this, you know, this little area, but it's actually kind of chopped up into to three, it's like, let's say it's about right there, into three parts. And um, one of those kind of, you know, and they, they call them districts. And this one that's down here, is called the Rocks District, where they have this uh, gravel. So this is this is what hmm, that looks like, and and it's called the Rocks District. And and but locally they call this the Funk. <laughs> and uh, it has really great drainage, well, as you can expect. There there isn't a lot of soil there to to hold on to any rain that's in there. Um, and it also adds a very distinctive flavor to uh, wines, especially Syrah. And so if you're ever looking for, in my humblest opinion, uh, the best Syrah in the, that state, uh, there is a winery out there that you should look for called Dusted Valley, which uh, I think of as the epitome of funky Syrah. Now, what, what funky mean that it's got this kind of like dusty, chalky, uh, and this to it, but it also has just like, you know, a lot of great, you know, like blackberry and plum flavors to it. Okay. Well, 
that, that was it for our lecture. So, are we ready for some wine? <laughs> so, our first wine is our 2020 Eroica Riesling. Now, this is, is a collaboration between uh, Chateau Saint Michel, who, you know, is really known for the Riesling, but they're more known for like their sweet Riesling. And then also Dr. Lucen, who, who is also really known for their, their Riesling. And so the two paired up to make something, I don't know, uh, I don't say grown up, but uh, much more of just like a sophisticated Riesling for, you know, the, uh, for the connoisseur. <laughs> Now, as I was opening this, I did notice one thing, and, and you guys will have to tell me if you see it on, in the bottle as well, but there were a couple of bubbles that were um, coming up from the bottom. Like there was a little bit of effervescence, and I don't think it's supposed to be there. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, if you actually look on the back, it, it actually has the scale for what, you know, Rieslings typically have, where it's the, you know, from dry to sweet, and then it has like a little arrow, and I think ours is uh, just below the off dry. No, yeah, it, it, well, it's effectively it off, off dry. dry. Yeah. Um, now, if you know anything about champagne, or the traditional method for making champagne, is that they leave some of the yeast uh, still alive in, in, in the wine. And then at the end, when they're bottling it up, they you know add a little bit of sugar before they dump that wine in there and the yeast reactivates. And it's what I'm kind of thinking happened with, with this is that somewhere along the way, uh, they didn't Usually for, for a white wine, what they do is they, they bring the, the temperature down to like 42 degrees and it, it pretty much kills off the yeast. But it seems like not all of it uh, was killed off this time around. And so that was is what's you know kind of producing a little bit of that uh, carbon dioxide that's you know, bubbling from, from the wine. I, I don't know there's there's much, but yeah, like I said, when I when I first opened it, I was like, why are there, you know, there, there shouldn't be bubbles. There should be a still wine. <laughs> so on that note, uh, let's go ahead and tilt our glasses 45 degrees in either an upward or downward direction with usually a, uh, a little bit of a white backdrop just to give you the a good sense of what your colors are on this. Now this this is uh it's it's right between pale yellow and yellow. At least in in my in my eyes. <laughs> and well, let's go ahead and give this thing a swirl and we'll prepare for our sniff. And we'll see what we get on the nose. All right, so uh, what's everyone what's everyone smelling on this one? I don't think this one smells very good. <laughs> it does. Pear, lots of pear. Yeah, pear. Okay. I think a little honey. I get a sweetness in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's some citrus. See, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, like a little bit of, a little bit of lime, and 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 green apple. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got to be green. I apple. taste a lot of green apple, but yeah. I, I smell pineapple. But uh, well, but there's there, there, there's 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 one other distinctive smell that I'm I'm getting from this that that is that is typical of all reasons. And that's that's like petrol, like gasoline. Yes, that's that's why she didn't like it. See, <laughs> it doesn't smell very good. <laughs> See, you are wrong. You're like, why does everybody smell all these good things? <laughs> yeah. So, so that that I mean, if if you were just like if you were just handed a, a glass okay. of, of white wine and, and you smelled and you smelled 
gasoline, uh, most likely uh, you might like, you might get some of it with a kind of moth, but overall, you know, Rieslings are going to have that kind of weird, you know, cross between gasoline and green apple. All right, well, let's give this thing a taste. So, cheers. 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 All right. So, so what's everyone getting on the palate? Some green apple. That orange day we had last weekend on the lake. Like acid. Like an 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 But I'm so glad that you said, Kendra, that like that it smells bad because I was like, I'm getting, and I was gonna say like diesel because that was a little, and I was like, well, I don't know, the right thing. So it's interesting. There's a little tiny bit, but I don't. I it it's not overpowering. Hey, Katrina, what vintage do you have? Yeah. 2020. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. They're the same. Now I will say that like it. It's not bubbly, but it gives me a very effervescent feel in my mouth. Mm -hmm. But I would say the first sip, it's a little better now, but I, it, I did taste yeah. more acid than I was expecting. Yeah, I, after about three or four sips, it's, it's, I'm getting less of the acid, more of like, you know, almost like a, like a lime sherbet. Yeah. Have you guys gotten to the pairings yet? Uh, yes! <laughs> we're, way, we're way ahead. I'm way ahead yeah. too. The balsamic vinaigrette with this is phenomenal. Oh, I, I can see that. As it should be. <laughs> we have shrimp and grits and it's really good. Carl also made some raisins. What's that? What did you pair with it? Shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. <laughs> so good. Carl also oh, made a, a pork on a pasta with fresh basil from his garden and mozzarella. And the basil is really good with this wine as well. It's a yeah. really unexpected pairing. I'm not surprised that it would make the herbaceous pop. Yeah, it does. But I think it's also because there's so much acid and it's so towards like the limey that that brings out the basil. I think you're right. That's spot on. And it's very good with chicken dipped in chimichurri. With all this, with all the herb too. Oh yeah, Kurt has uh, fresh strawberry that he liked and I really was shocked how nice the fresh strawberry was because I think the acid of the strawberry and the acid of the wine sort of work together. We have a really funky brie. Okay. Pretty good with that. Oh yeah, we have garlic toast with brie and it's really good with that too. I was shocked. Yeah, but we have a brie that like, you smell it as soon as you walk into the room. So that's why I'm saying it's really funky. It's like a farmer's brie. Yeah, ours is a goat cheese brie. Ooh. It's pretty good. Oh, and the apple. Yeah, yeah, it's we're delicious. delicious. This is a, a really great all-around wine. Like, there's nothing, nothing hurts. It. It's, it's just, this is a really great experience. <laughs> well, thanks, Kurt. Yeah, I mean, this, this is just, yeah, it, it's a wine that, I, again, it, it's pretty highly rated. And again, you know, between not as much, I, I don't trust 
Chateau Saint Michel. You know, it's not like wine that I I would go to, but I really like Dr. Lucen, and you know, the fact that they they collaborated on you know make, making something that that both of them specialize in, um, you know, kind of turned me on to it. And yeah, every time that I I try to do you know Washington wines as like a feature. The, the, this is the this is the white wine to, to feature from Washington. You know the, the the other one that I would I would say uh, makes a really good white is uh, L'Ecole, which means the school because the, that, that's actually what they bought was like an old schoolhouse and they they you know put the winery in there, but but they make a shard that it is really really good. bad after you drink a little more of it it's that first taste that was just wow yeah you gotta like spin it so you just open up and then so i'm just having a little uh like hard white cheese with a, a rosemary crust on it and that's again that that herbaceous um has, has really kind of come to the forefront so i'm always wondering if they did uh either these were harvested early or they did what's called a whole cluster pressing where they kind of leave in all the all the stems and that that in itself also lends um, a little bit of like a green note to the wine and you know i always personally i i love that kind of green flavor and you know again well because it also pairs so well with with pretty much any kind of herb that you have question whether or not like something green like like, like green, green pepper yeah. is, is going to be the, in the same realm as like like herbs yep this is good okay it has feta on it it has some capers in it so it's got some interesting okay do we have like a little bit of like pickled sa uh, sampler and the jalapenos it really like uh, accentuates the heat, but also like the the earthiness of the jalapeno itself. It's really weird. So the er so earthiness, not not like the green part, but yeah, it's hard to explain like the flavor. I want to say it's kind of like the yeah, but it's bringing out the um, sorry, someone was talking to me. It's what is next? I guess the plant aspect of it, like it's kind of I want to say earthy is just the flavor I would associate it. With, okay, but like almost. Vegetable kind of like roughage. Are we sure? All right. <laughs> What's next? Uh, next will be the H3 Merlot. So this is the 2018. According to uh, some of the things out there, this this wine was uh, top 25 Merlots from Washington, which I'm. I'm not really sure you know, if that's a a good thing or not. <laughs> I, I I don't really know how many Merlots actually come out of Washington because there might be 25. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we're looking at this H3 Merlot, in terms of its color, oh, this is actually darker than I was expecting. Really 
You're getting purple? Because oh. I, when I'm I getting... put it up against a napkin without the light, yeah, purple. With the light, it's a little more ruby. Yeah, I was going to say like dark ruby. Yeah, garnet. I'm not getting the brown for a garnet. I'm not though. getting the brown for the garnet. But... Yeah, I'm getting a little bit. It's on the edge. Okay. Eight, eight. All right. There's a lot of little bubbles. What the heck? <laughs> well, I think we've gawked at it enough. Let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a swirl. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Mm. So I would say it's like kind of stewed, stewed fruit. Okay. What kind of fruit? Like plum, not like berry. It's a little deeper than that. It's like an acetone, like a really strong acetone. Really? An acetone, huh? Yeah. I'm getting like plum, um, maybe like a hint of chocolate. Very much chocolate. Yes, like, lots like, of chocolate. Like, it, lots like, of chocolate. To, to me, the, 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 this, this smells like uh, a whole lot of American oak because I'm, I'm getting both chocolate, Agreed. vanilla, like and 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 oh, no, like, like, a, like a little bit of dill. Oh, Richard, that's why I said mmm. Because like, you know, I like my like my oak in my wine. So I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. You have a death by chocolate. Oh yeah. Hey, oh, oh, oh. All right. Well, let's give this thing a let's give this thing a taste and see how uh, how it matches up with our our noses. That is a that is an interesting Merlot. Yeah. It's very I mean I mean it's still it's still silky. Very which, which which you know is is kind of the reason why I you know I don't like Merlot as much <laughs> because they're just kind of silky. So very flatness to but, it. I don't know what what are it has a longer finish than most Merlots, which is why I don't like most Merlots, but it's a little bit of a longer finish. Yeah, it's got a really long finish on it. And that's, I mean, but it, it tastes like all smoke. Yeah. I kind of think the finish is too much. And most Merlots are a little bit more acidic for me, and they're much quicker drop off like you're like okay i'm done with that so where's the next one and this one it's got a longer yeah this one you you, you really want some like smoked you meat with this thing this, 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 is, this is like this is like yeah. grilled burgers Girls, steak, you know so we have a, a stuffed bell pepper and this is phenomenal with it okay It'll be interesting. It would like ground with ground beef, cheese, and a little. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my I mean, Merlot is is kind of like the quintessential, you know, meat steak or meat. Good, it should be sharing the steak. Okay. Sorry, the Zoom call just dropped me. Say that again. Uh, Mer Merlot is kind of like the quintessential steak or, or just red meat wine. Yeah, because it, it has a lot of those same, you know, like I said, it, it's silky, so it's not going to, um, you know, I say, it's not, it's not going to like, you know, uh, compete with something like like a like a Cabernet, where you know you've got other participating oh, in there, really like good. you know, uh, like some green notes, you know, herbs, things really like that. Good. And Merlot is, I don't want to say a, a one trick pony, but you know, it, it's pretty much that that dark fruit. And you know, you, you get some stuff from the wood and that in itself, you know, is pretty much, you're looking at like, well, red meat from the dark fruit and then, well, throw it on a fire. And that's the, you know, kind of char from the, uh, the barrel. And so it, it's it's just it's a match made. <laughs> the blackberry does not. No, don't do that. <laughs> no blackberry. 
don't do that. <laughs> it's not as strong when you eat chocolate with it. The chocolate is so good. Yeah. We have chocolate like the most. What's the most surprising thing to me is how consistent the taste is throughout the like entire experience. Like it doesn't like have fall off in flavor. It doesn't like change. You don't get like a tannin. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Well, most Merlots there is. There's some kind of it drops on you, and you're like, eh. personally, I don't like Merlot. This would probably do like okay with sweets too. Possible. I mean, it would have to be something also kind of like one noted, like a uh, like, uh, like a like a lava cake. <laughs> like I'm getting like this, um, like the kind of like not chalky, but like it has like a little substance in, in this feel. I feel like that would go really well with chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now remember, this this is from the the, the horse Heaven Hills, so I mean it, it's going to be a little bit warmer than the rest of Washington. That is definitely winning. Are you still yeah. on the Merlot? Is that what you're drinking, Richard? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's like I said, it, it, it's a very interesting Merlot. You know, I mean, yeah, personally, I, I, I kind of take uh, after the, the movie Sideways that, that Merlots are not a great thing. And I, I, I watch that movie far after I, I already had my my own opinion of Merlot. And I was like, oh, that that man is speaking to me. <laughs> So like another one of my favorite pairings just to like test against all the different wines. The Cornichons like pickles, phenomenal. It has like a like a it actually changes the flavor a little bit more through like with the acid. Interesting. So pickles, like what was the type of pickles? They're, they're the Trader Joe's Cornichons. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, I mean, I mean, th this, as much as it, as it's good, um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I also have to kind of say that. The, the amount of oak that, that is being thrown at this um, likens back to like yeah, the early 2000s. Really, like, and... because I mean, most most wines these days aren't aren't nearly as as heavily yes. charred oak as um, you know they once were. Like in in the early 2000s, you know that was the big big you know rave. You know the the more oak more smoke, the more chocolate and vanilla that you could throw into, you know, those wines, the better. Huh. You know, but I'd say, I'd say close to, yeah, 20, 2012, 2013, uh, that, that habit really started to shift because, well, the songs at that point had a fatigue palate and they wanted something kind of fresh and new. I would drink this with 
<laughs> All right. Are we uh, ready for wine number two? Yes, yes we are. <laughs> okay, so wine number three is our 2020 Pendulum Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, the front of it says Columbia Valley, uh, but if you look on the back, it actually says it's been both produced and bottled over in Walla Walla. So this will be our, you know, uh, one of our Walla Walla ones. <laughs> oh, this is a different one. We couldn't get the same, so we have the guide. Okay. But it's also from Walla Walla. All right. Ours is a 2019. Oh, sweet. Okay. Before the fires. And it's it's pretty brown. See, it's brown. It's a garnet. It's definitely garnet. Okay. Like mine is, it's it, it's it's right on the edge of purple, but it's still kind of more in the red category. This is purple. It is garnet. It is brown. <laughs> The bubbles are purple. They're not. They're brown. They're brown. Sure. Brown you, usually you don't start to see, you know, like garnet, you know, kind of brown rims until at least six years of age. So, I'm, 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 I mean, unless this thing is like completely oxidized already, which which at that point you're, you're going to have a bad time. But uh, I, 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 I would be super surprised if a three-year-old wine had any sort of like brown to it. Alright, we'll go with Ruby. Oh, I <laughs> Alright, so we've had enough gawky. So let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a swirl and a sniff. That is spicy. It's got a jalapeno. Fast for tears. The wine, I, I was playing the how much percent. I guess 14 in my mind is 13 sevens. I'm feeling good. And this was 14 Oh, the cab is. Mine is 13 seven. This one has slower tears, right? This is spicy as heck. Is that so what you're getting? Mine, Just like yeah. a bunch of spices? Yeah. Like it's, it's, weird. it's like jalapeno and and yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I get floral, um, which is bizarre. Really sandwich Mine is like really yeah. sweet. Yeah. See, I, I'm I'm getting like some spices, but I'm getting like like purple violets. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe. I was thinking of mega purple, maybe. Yeah. Nah, it, it, it's definitely not mega purple. It, it, <laughs> because 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 that 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 wouldn't smell purple. That would smell like uh like a gym mat. This like literally reminds me of like what grape drink is. Not grape juice, grape drink. Garlic. Yeah. Well, that that's yeah. currants. Garlic. Like a black currant. Maybe a blackberry. Yeah. So maybe a black currant. But I was getting a lot of raw on the first sniff. It was wild. That, that that's always the weird thing is that like like fake grape flavor is is more modeled after black currants than it is after like actual grapes black grapes like you know our, our encore grapes. Why are you you don't love this? Now, much like the same as uh, uh, banana flavor is uh, extraordinarily bland. I think it's it's what modeled after the Cavendish. Is it the Cavendish uh, banana? Like it. it's got instead, instead of whatever the, the, the new... real bananas are. It's... Yeah. Anyways, um, but oh, and I, now I smell yeah. Like, I taste that. yeah, I just get like a bunch of like spices, like almost like a little bit of tip, like a little bit of tobacco. Uh, there's the health. Yeah, I saw that. So, so but you, you, you have a different year, right? So you have a 2019. Mm -hmm. So now we have the 2019. I mean, well, and I tasted it, and I was like, oh, raspberry, and I smelled the raspberry, but then it went away, and the jalapeno came back. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe it was a colder year, or, or just a, you know, a drier year, where they didn't, they didn't develop as much, and well, as we know with, with Cap Sob, that if it's harvested you know below like a certain 
bricks ripeness, uh, it will develop those like pyrazines, which is that kind of green, you know, that green flavor, that green bell pepper jalapeno. Yeah. Is that so that, what, uh, the South African wine, Pinotage, has pyrazines in it or no? Uh, no. no uh, Pinotage uh, is like the petrol. It, a little bit of petrol, but it'll usually have like a like a like a latex. Okay. Yeah, what you would think of as as pretendencies or breading, uh, but it's really just that grape it has has those kind of weird band aid, you know, uh, antiseptic. Is what's in olive oil? Mm -hmm. The 2020 was the forest fires, right? When some people they might have like rushed to pull them out early in, in in the one you have, or however they managed it. Maybe, or well, it's either that or they they don't have quite the same uh, stipulations as California, and so you know them them producing wines with smoke taint um, isn't you know nearly as uh, or you know prohibited. Have you I, so I drank ten? Are you getting a smoke? Are you getting smoke in it? No. No I feel like I've had a couple of the early 2020 wines where it's it just the smoke tastes like smoke. Well, I mean, at least from the smell, I'm not getting much smoke. Like I said, I'm getting a little bit of tobacco and, and black fruit, but... I feel there's some tobacco. I feel, I, I think that's an arse too. But, uh, well, let's give this thing a, a taste. So, sure. I like this one. I think this is good. Yeah, raspberry, So the wine is so light like, on the finish. Oh, it's bizarre. Yeah. This is like not as a, I guess, full bodied as I, I would expect from the cab set. Yeah, I, if I if I was if I was doing this lineup again, well, n now tasting these wines, I probably would have almost put the cab before the Merlot. The Merlot was just so unctuous that. Yeah. This one is is kind of fighting to actually, you know, like hit our palate correctly. Yeah. It's really great with the Jimmy Jury. The green come out even more. It is like you have there. It's good with chocolate too. Mm. And nuts. Okay. So, I mean, has there been many, you know, uh, changes? We're, you know, we're finding to... this very fruity for a cab. Agreed. I 100% agree about that. Yeah. Me yeah. This, and, and the to me, this the is a very, was, was this very is a very ripe cab. Love, yeah. yeah, that, I, I mean, compared to the, you know, the, I'm, I'm going to guess that you have the 2020 as well, compared to the, the 2019 that, Team Foodie has? No, I have a different one and it's 2019. Okay. And it does not play well with the funky brie. Whoa, that was oh terrible. my god. No, you usually <laughs> brie and like a like a bloomy rind cheese aren't, aren't, aren't the greatest of pairings. But it was okay with the Merlot because it's enough oak. This one's too fruity. Yeah. Just I mean, this one, this one has a lot more acidity wine. left to it. But, but yeah, no, I mean, this is, uh, you know, a much more uh, aged Cabernet than, than uh, again, the Team Foodie having their, their 2019 with, with those green notes to it really tells me that there's, um, they had to, they had to harvest a little bit uh, less ripe than the one that we had. Uh, just to pair it with someone said earlier, uh... Dark chocolate peanut butter cups are phenomenal with it. Oh, wow. Bold move, Corey. I know. <laughs> hey, I peanut butter is what comes forward the most. Oh. Are those the Trader Joe ones? How did you know? Because they are the best peanut butter cups oh. ever. Just ever. the peanuts are good. Chocolate. You know, chocolate and peanuts. Mm -hmm. so I've tried like 15 or 20 different kind of peanut butter cups, and Trader Joe's one. Trader Joe's like so. 
Uh, for parents, yeah, 100%. Cashews are great with it as well. What is that? Cashews. Cashews? Yes. They taste really well with it. We have that. We're going to try that right now. There you go. I'm guessing it's the, it, the, the fattiness. Because cashews are, are pretty fatty. Yep. simply for like, the to see if there's any like in it, and that's going to there's a fish shaped fish. Let's see how it goes with uh, some scotch bonnet pepper uh -huh. uh, cheddar. Fish shaped fish. No, it goes really good with like the salt of the cashew and the fat. Mm -hmm. um, Anything in particular that comes out? For the the cashews, mm -hmm. but like the salt and like as you mentioned earlier, the the fat like really come forward when you're drinking the wine, and like after that you get kind of like the obviously the nutty tone. Okay. We have unsalted cashews. You no, do a blueberry. Oh my god. Did you did you do a bar? No, it's oh try the um, so I so I sauce. Sorry, I love it with the stuffed pepper because it's pretty good with my poblano stuffed pepper. Is car, right? Um, it was, it was okay with the pepper. What is it? What's good? It's the Merlot. That is. Pretty fabulous. Dishes are good. Mm -hmm. is good. I, I enjoyed it more with the Merlot, yeah. Okay. Okay, so so mm -hmm. the, the burger with the blue cheese with this cab, so not not mm -hmm. great, but yeah. I have some still, and that um, is going delicious. Yeah, because the Stilton has more creaminess to it. Yeah, more creaminess, but it also has like that oh, almost like God. ammonia. Mm -hmm. That it, it's got some something else funky to it that that isn't in just like a, a you know a typical blue cheese. And that that is really going well together. Oh, blue cheese will be good. Yeah. With this day, blue cheese. I would like I would like you know blue cheese. I would like that. How's everyone's glasses looking? I got one more taste. One more. All right. Blue cheese. Sold you on the blue cheese, huh? Mm hmm I prefer this with food rather than plain. Mm -hmm. This is a good with food wine. Some of the others were good on their own. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's, it's worth it, right? It's just not bold enough to be just sitting here drinking by itself. No. That mm -hmm. bread is amazing. But it's fantastic amazing. with food. You have to try it with food. You're just going to pour yourself another little bite. Corey, I just did a side by side of the cab and then the Merlot with the pepper. Like, right, it's good. Good. And, you, and you like the Merlot more? Yep. What'd you say? No, Do I was it. asking, and what was the conclusion? Oh, the Merlot is kicking the cab's butt in terms of yeah, the, no, the pepper. Yeah, I understand. So like cab, cab and blue cheese is the, the winner. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, Richard, you mentioned bricks, and we had bought these a while ago. So these oh. are bricks chocolate. OK. Me meant to be paired with wine, I'm guessing. Exactly. Yeah. It's extra dark, seventy percent. So. Well, because because that that's that's the measurement that um, you know grape growers use to right. kind of measure the amount of sugar that's in a grape. It's called bricks. And I mean the at least from what I remember, uh, a level of of twenty two to twenty three bricks is what they would consider you know like a ripe grape. Yeah, that, that's where it's, it's sweet enough that it's going to actually, you know, ferment. Well. All right. On that note, let's move on to our last wine of the night, which is our uh, Owen Rowe X. Right. This. Groody, like it brings out like that. Yes. Did you call this the best wine of the night? 
No, well, I said the fourth one of the night, but oh, the fourth it, it also could. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to hope that it is also going to be the best, the best one of the night. Okay. So, so, so this is our Syrah. Mm. And you made it all in Latin, so it's all fancy. Well, I mean, yeah, anything Latin uh, <laughs> makes things more fancy. Uh, so, so ex, ex umbris <laughs> means like from the shadows. Oh, cool. So I, I'm, I'm going to guess that that this is probably right up against some kind of hillside that you know sees well pr probably has a lot of shade to it. And shadows. Mm-hmm. Throwing <laughs> shade. So that's a big thing with the Columbia Valley, isn't it? Where like a, a glacier moved through there, uh, whatever, during the last ice age, and it created like a lot of like high up and a lot of like low valleys. Yep. So you get a range of, of you know, I don't know. Rich people well, there. well, I mean, like the rest of the Columbia Valley and Yakima, very hilly. Um, you you wouldn't really see as much hills in in Walla Walla. It's like when I when I was out there, um, for for the most part, uh, Walla Walla was, was as flat as Kansas. Okay. <laughs> Walla Walla kind of has the better wine, doesn't it? It, it well, particular like for me again, my my preference is that Walla Walla makes the best Syrahs. Uh, so I mean, that that that's. But Syrah doesn't really need. You know, it wants as much sunlight and, you know, everything else as possible. So what is this again? This one's from Walla Walla? This so, Syrah? No, well, this one's kind of, it actually just says from kind of everywhere. Okay. You know, it just says Columbia Valley. So um, I guess he, like, this guy is the, the Owen Rowe. Uh, actually, his, his winery? is down in Oregon somewhere, which I'm going to guess is, is closer to like, you know, when they say Oregon, it's more still in the Columbia Valley, but in Oregon. Um, but it sounds like he he grabs grapes from many, you know, like from the Yakima Valley, the rest of Columbia, Walla Walla, and to produce this, uh, this Syrah. <laughs> That's similar to the A to Z folks in Oregon. But uh, as we, now this, this is a, yeah, this I'm putting in like in the definite purple. Purple, <laughs> this, this is this is a dark, which, you know, for, for a Syrah, you know, Syrahs being the, uh, what are classified as super heavyweights. So, you know, it having that kind of really dark color uh, same with like petite Syrah, uh, Nebbiolos. This is this is going to be you know pretty much your your darkest of, of your wine grapes. So let's give this thing a swirl and a sniff. Oh, I can't taste it though. Here, this is a. I, I'm doing like a like a herb. All right. So what's everyone getting on the nose? For mild. Mild, or just, so it's not—it's not as like punch in the face as the rest of them. It's not as punch in the face as that first one, man. That—that that, <laughs> <one, laughs> that was acid. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get some jam. I would say kind of jammy a little bit. That was my first smell. I mean, this, this is this is total black fruit. Not popcorn, right? Uh, this is like blackberry and plum. Um, I smell blackberry. Buttery and beer is when <laughs> it's been on the East Cape too long. So uh, I put a beer in fermenter. There's a little bit of like it's very yeasty. I should I should show you this one sometime. This is really fun. So it's got it's got some spices to it. Oil like, water. I'm, I'm, I'm smelling a little bit of licorice. Um, I do the same with the meat. 
Are you sure you're not eating liquor? Right. No, no, I, I, I stay away from from liquor, so I, I my, my nose can tell me, okay, this this has anise in it. It's just it's just it's only thing, it moves. It starts spinning. It's weird. It, like I'm I'm getting almost like a, like a white pepper. I'm getting a lot of like yeast. You're getting yeast, okay. Definitely tastes like jammy. I'm also, it's not a taste, uh, smells jammy. Um, there's a little bit like an acetone on it too. Like I'm getting that like chemical smell. I can, I can, I can see, you know, the, the, the chemical being, you know, in that kind of almost that same realm as, as spices because, hmm. Yeah. I think what, I, what I'm smelling as black pepper, you might be smelling as acetone. When somebody made something with white pepper in it, so I'm curious to hear how that tastes. Well, speaking of taste, let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a Very. give this thing a taste. So, cheers. Jesus, I'm I like this. It has a really good mouthfeel. White pepper, I think there's like a baking spice. What? And I'm looking at it. Yeah. Like Lighter a, than I was expecting. It's, it's, it's like a lot spice. of blackberry. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of weird that, that the Merlot, I would think of as, as like the heaviest out of all of these. I would agree, it's my favorite. I know that shocks you. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, me, well, the Merlot, like I said, you know, felt like a like a one trick pony. This this has some some like subtle complex you know complexity to it. The Merlot like, had more of an aftertaste. Well, I'm thinking like the change in taste with this wine is phenomenal. Like that tannin bite at the end. This is big old red. Your tongue is like look at your tongue. Yeah, this is your tongue. <laughs> your tongue. Oh, that is a black wine. Yeah, I mean it, it morphs from from. Like, like I said, it's, it's like mostly fresh. Retaste. Yeah, fr First. It, it's definitely not into like the like juicy, it meat, it but it is definitely like like fresh black fruit, like like a, like, a, like I said, like blackberries and, and plum. It's definitely a fruit forward. Yeah, but I mean, but the thing is though, is that like almost immediately after those fruits, it, it like. That 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 second chorus comes in with like, like some some weird spices, and like I said I, I don't know if it's you know again I, I'm I'm somewhere between white pepper, licorice, and clove. Where's the fucking licorice? Yeah. Licorice. You get okay. You guys Do you get anise in it? You may have used the mouth. Good, good call on the garlic. Oh. Ben Chico goes with all the wines. I know. Oh. So shocking. Oddly enough, the pickles do too. The pasta sauce is also really good. How is it with the licorice? Oh, she's saying. I'm going to have more for more. <laughs> I don't know how to do a wine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the licorice allows you to, to kind of taste what I was tasting from it, from the wine. The garlic brings more fruit to it. So does the licorice. The licorice is really lovely, and it makes it Hmm. What is that? Like a raspberry? Interesting. It's You're almost going away from black. Yeah, it's really I weird. I can see that because black licorice is black licorice. So, so the the black licorice all of a sudden makes it taste more like red fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. You haven't bought black licorice yet. You won't eat black licorice. <laughs> nope. I, 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 weird. 
I'm, I'm still I'm still the guy that you know like when I get a, a pack of Jelly Bellies, the black liquors stay in the bag and they get thrown in the trash. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's better with the licorice than with the chocolate, for sure. Oh my god, that's actually. It's really nice. Yeah. What it brings out in the pecorino cheese is just it, the the flavor changes as you're like drinking. It's so. Good. That's funky. Super fun. Yeah, yeah, no, it hits you like funky at the beginning, but then it like mellows out, and then you get uh like kind of like the briny taste on the end. See, and and that's what that's why I love about you know something like this is that everybody's is is trying it with all these different things, and and they're all reporting. I'm tasting this and I'm tasting that, like like a vast array of different things comparatively to, you know, some of the other wines where it's going to taste mostly the same, you know, just certain things are accentuated. But with this, it, it all of a sudden morphs into like a whole new personality. The, the coolest thing, uh, pairing wise, <laughs> at least so far for me, is the the stuffed bell pepper because it brings out like the savoriness of the meat, but then like the sweetness of the pepper. Oh, so it's like it's really it's a really nice pairing. Oh, it's really okay. Three, and I like four. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that greatness, like the pepper and the cherry with the with it brings a little heat to the wine. The most mellow ones, the ones where just kind of mellow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't do so well with the cheddar. Let's, let's see how the Stilton does. But it did great with chocolate. Yeah. Okay. It was, well, we had licorice. It was better with licorice than with chocolate. It was good with chocolate, but it was better with licorice. I just think everything is good with <laughs> it. It's it's probably one of my my favorite cheeses. Manchego? I do not have any manchego. <laughs> what was your favorite cheese, Richard? Uh, Stilton. I just did it. Stilton Blue. Yeah. Wait, say that one more time. Great. Stilton. S T I L T O N. Where do you get it? Uh, most most places that have like a deli with cheese is is going to have like right next to the the Danish blue it should be some still. Yeah. It's not us. It, it's it's you know a a, a particular blue cheese that's made in England, but they I don't know. Uh, I mean it, 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 it's the same the, the same uh, uh, bacteria as like. A regular blue cheese, like, you know, Basilius, whatever. But it, 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 it just has this like extra like to it that you know when you smell it, it almost kind of smells like ammonia. But it, it's just it's just really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's appetizing. Ammonia cheese. Mm -hmm. well, you could get you could get Stilton with apricots, or you could get Stilton with some kind of fruit that might help it for you. So, well, well, that they well, because if you actually look at the the one with apricots, it'll actually say white Stilton. So it, it's it's the Stilton cheese without, you know, it, it being kind of like uh, inoculated with, with the blue. Yep. Green skills class is something that's pretty yummy. I like the ethics. Blah, blah, blah stuff. The ethics and how it works. Hmm. Best thing to get out of this world. So, what was, uh, what was everyone's favorite wine of the night? Aroyga. Aroyga? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just, I know I like Aroyga. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, when, once you've tried Aroyga, yeah, there really isn't too many other, you know, great, um, either Washington whites or just, you know, it, it should be like your go-to white wine for kind of everything. Uh, mine is the, the Merlot for the first and probably only time in my life. The Merlot was my favorite. Okay. Because <laughs> I usually do not like Merlot. And this is the third one. So you so like the, 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 yeah. the pendulum cab. Okay. Like it. 
yeah i i mean for me yeah it, it's it, it, it's really a toss-up between uh, the Eroica and uh, this ex -Umbers. Yeah, ours went, so we're looking at our bottles and we drank the most of the Eroica and then the Syrah second. And what were the other two? And then the Merlot. And then the Merlot, Merlot and then the Cab. So we like we liked the Merlot better than the Cab, which we'll probably get Which is bizarre for us. Awesome. Like I just said, this is the only time I think I'll ever say the Merlot was my favorite. Yeah, I agree. You thought the Merlot was your favorite? It is out of all four of these. Okay. For sure. Right the Eureka and the Syrah are pretty neck and neck. Well, I no, bet it has no, the Eureka is. So, and then the last thing to really kind of talk about is, well, uh, the next one, since this one was, was you know, kind of shortened in the amount of time between the last, uh, we'll be going four weeks out. So that puts us to... One, two, three, four, the 24th. We'll be in uh, Twin Owls RG. Okay. Well, might just be the one you missed. <laughs> we should do. We should it's do fine. The wine tasting at Twin Owls. We could probably do it there, right? Yeah, but okay. with with four weeks out, um, you know, usually with the ones that are four weeks out, I almost kind of like that amount of time because then we can, you know, really get something like fun. Good. Sorry. Well, I mean, because oh. now we well, with, with this we we. We can allow enough time that you know all of us can go to like an online order. So you know, doing something like shop online or shop wine online or something like that. Uh, any any uh, suggestions for places that we want to like really do? You know, in a you know, in, in that kind of fashion. Uh, Are you going to go expensive know? like Sonoma? Uh, we, we could do Sonoma. I mean, because there we, we could do like the, the best of. You know, sort of popping of, through American regions a little bit. Well, we have yeah. enough Chilean wine. Well, well, last session region. we were talking about doing either like New World versus Old World. And I really think we should try that. You haven't went to Finger Lakes, have you? Oh, are you, you going to go back and let's do that? We did that. Uh, um, the, what was the, the Judgment, Judgment of Paris? Paris? Yeah. And yeah, we, and that's, that's what Tori was just suggesting. And proposed yeah. to Joseph, what's his name? The, the guy that we love so much. So oh, Rob and I are going to Stag's Leap in this week, uh, Friday. We're going okay. Wow, awesomeness. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So let's. Oh, Barry, his name is still out there. That's why. Right, Steven Spurrier? Right, right. That, that, that's the guy that, you know, like set up. You know, he was the, the Englishman that was. Oh, over yeah. Okay. That'd be cool. So, is it, is it like two whites, two reds from, you know? Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll do a. So, well, with with the Judgment of Paris, if I if I remember correctly, I think they did a. I'm not sure if they. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to check again if, if they did a Chablis or if they actually did like, uh, you know, a white from Bordeaux. Uh, I, I know that the red came, you know, was. was they had a couple from from both left and right bank Bordeaux versus you know like Napa cabs. So um, yeah, we, we we can definitely do a little uh, new world old world battle. But the seventeenth doesn't work. What's that? The seventeenth. Well, I mean, if you guys are you know up for. So the original was Doing it, doing top it the, quality Chardonnays. The Chardonnays were one. And a Bordeaux from France, the Cab from Napa. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if everyone, you know, if it works for everyone better on the 17th, then, then we'll do the 17th. <laughs> Is that September? We've got yeah. monthly meeting on, on, on the 24th. So it'd be nice if we could, like, well, I mean, between your meeting and, and Team Foodie having a, an RG. Then, then, yeah, moving it to the 17th, 
you know, to, to include everybody. Oh, uh, we've got, yeah, either one. We would prefer the 24. Oh, okay. But do what you're gonna do. Well, it depends. Like, if we're gonna do, you know, the winery direct, like, we just need ample time to get the stuff shipped. So is it gonna be within that time frame? Yeah, well, I mean, they usually ship within two weeks. So it's just a matter of me, you know, selecting the wines in enough time. Where, where are we going then? So, so, so the next. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the the judgment of Paris. That that's it, 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 it's effect. It's effectively what what put Napa on the map for for wine. Now, it was it was an English guy that was uh, that had a uh, a school of wine in France, and was told that you know like some some upstart Yanks were were making wine. And you know, his philosophy was that French wine was best wine, and so then he went to Napa and was actually kind of impressed by the wine that was there. And he had set up a blind tasting of Napa Cab and Napa Chardonnay versus, you know, uh, French Chardonnay and and French red wine, and. Napa won. <laughs> and that was in, I want to say 1974. America. And, and they actually had like two of those, you know, uh, scents. And both times, California is also won. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that, that was, you know, we, we've done it once before where, yeah, we, 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 we are essentially among us doing a, you know, judgment of paris where we're going to be looking at you know a white from the old world versus new world and a red from old world versus new world to really you know uh experience what those differences are because for for the most part um you know how you can tell an old world wine versus a new world is that old world tend to be uh, less fruit forward you know much more on the like minerality uh, spices leather, earth, you know, those are going to be the, the notes that kind of come to the forefront first versus, you know, a uh, new world where the fruit is, is like on main stage. And so, you know, we'll be able to kind of see what, what those differences are. Any uh, idea what regions you'll pick? Is it only going to be U.S. versus the uh, EU? Yeah, so I'm I'm I'm, well, I'm going to try to replicate it as as close as possible. So I mean, depending on on you know how everyone feels budgetary wise, you know I'm I'm actually thinking about you know like if we want to make it as as close as possible, then it's going to be you know it's going to be a, a pretty good Bordeaux versus Stag's Leap Artemis, and it's going to be you know, uh, a really good Napa shard from up north, which is like Calistoga. You know, if 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 not actually from you know Chateau Marcolino, versus um, pro probably a Chablis. <laughs> I'm, 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 like I said, I have to I have to research what white they compared it to, because I'm I'm going to guess it probably wasn't the like the the Bordeaux Blanc Entre du Mer, because. Those are those are okay, but they're not like the pinnacle of white wine. Usually, for, for for French whites, you know, Chablis is like, you know, on a pillar above everybody else. 